Hey, 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 what is up guys? Welcome to another video. My name's Carlos. This is a stolen intro, but you're watching an Eastgate quick build. Let's get started. Welcome back. So I love my Pulse Echo, despite its glaring design flaws and now defunct company. Like I mentioned in the Pulse Board's post-mortem video though, it is damaged in several key ways. One of those ways is the blown USB port and indicator lights. When I was trying to repair the top battery shell, I managed to do a reverse polarity short on it. Long story short, I let the magic smoke out. Poof. After it happened, I looked into possibly just replacing the blown chip, but I couldn't find a supplier for the one in the board. For a long time, I just kind of accepted that this was how my board was gonna be from now on. I had a Bluetooth module, so I didn't need indicator lights, and I always carry a power bank with me in case my remote or phone dies while I'm on a ride. With lockdown though, it got me thinking with all of my newly learned electronics experience, I could probably build a replacement circuit. Here was the plan. The original charging circuit worked like this. You'd press the power button and the indicator lights would turn on, showing you how much charge you had left. Alongside that, the USB port would turn on too. It was a five volt, one amp charging port from what I remember. So those are our key design points. Single push button for power, LED charge indicator lights, and a five volt, one amp USB port. Now, I had some other factors I also needed to consider in designing this. I'm incredibly space constrained due to needing to fit this inside the top shell of my battery. And my 10S battery gets as high as 42 volts. I had to make sure to pick parts that were rated to work with that voltage. I started with the battery voltage indicator lights. I just needed something that would read out the voltage level as lights and not a screen. I managed to find a five LED indicator, just like the original on AliExpress. By default, the one I picked has a push button that when pressed, lights up the corresponding number of LEDs in relation to how charged the battery is. Next up, how was I gonna step down 42 volts to five volts in such a small space? Fully custom DIY builders have it easy and can just go with an off the shelf buck converter, but I needed something a lot smaller than that. I didn't really have an answer for my problem until I stumbled upon a company called Pololu. It's a Las Vegas based electronics and robotics supplier that also happens to produce a series of voltage converters that are perfect for my use case. Their D36V28FX series step down converters are tiny, cheap, and powerful enough to output over one amp to my USB port, all while being compatible with my 42 volt battery. The problem is I needed a way to turn it off and on at the same time as the battery indicator, which brings me to my third component of the build, a generic soft latching power switch. I know that kind of sounds like gibberish, so let me explain. Power switches come in several different types. My Firefly uses a slide switch to turn off and on, easily understood. Pushed one way on, the other was off. Another type is like the power button on my Echo. You push it down and it latches down to turn on, press it again and it pops up to turn off. That's a latching power button. However, I was looking for a power button like what's on my Meepo V1. It's a single push button that toggles power on and off with a momentary switch. That's what's known as a soft latching switch. Pololu actually has a few of those available, but none of them can take the voltage from a fully charged battery at 42 volts. So I had to go with the generic one that's supposedly rated for between 20 and 100 volts at 1.6 amps. I'm not gonna test that maxed out claim though. I'm just hoping for the best at 42 volts. Anyway, with this board as the start of my circuit, I can force the battery indicator to be permanently on by using a jumper wire so it thinks the button is always pressed. Then I can just wire the five volt step down and indicator boards in parallel. So when I toggle the soft latch, both of them will be turned on. Now, it'll also be easy to see if I left the USB port turned on too. With the plan and parts ready, it's time to get started wiring everything together. First things first, like I mentioned earlier, I had to desolder the original USB port, push button, and connection to the battery. Is this what you guys really wanna see? You wanna see ASMR soldering content? You want me to talk really slow and quietly? If you're as creeped out as I am right now, drop me a like on the video. With all of those removed, we can go ahead and wire up the battery connector to the soft latch. Then we'll go ahead and add some wires to the push button. 
Then attach the push button as the trigger for the soft latch. With those two pieces together, I went ahead and gave the soft latch a quick test with my multimeter. It all seemed to work all right on and off camera, so let's just keep chugging along. Next, I added some power and ground cables to my USB port, soldered those to the output of the Pololu step-down converter, and added some power and ground inputs to the converter. Since I need the battery indicator and converter to turn on at the same time, I went ahead and wired their power and ground cables together in parallel, respectively. With those wired together, I can go ahead and solder the power and ground to the soft latch. Time for a quick test. With a press of the button, we can see that my battery is fully charged. Perfect. Now, I wanted to keep this project as simple as possible, but me being me, I made it complicated. I decided I should probably make a scaffolding of some kind in order to hold all of my parts in the right spots. So I went ahead and designed and printed that out. Turns out my first design was too tall. So I reprinted a shorter version. All it needed now was some hot glue and wire management to get it all fitted inside the battery. Links to all the parts are down in the description. They should all work with your boards too if you wanted to do a similar build. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you loved it. I've got new projects every week and an eSkate news roundup every Friday. Hope to see you there. Until next time, toodles.